Kenji is a young man who has had his heart broken just a few minutes ago and can't go to sleep. He suddenly receives a strange message from someone on his phone, a really long code. Kenji instantly solves it, the nerd that he is, hoping to get a prize out of it. But it's all a prank, he gets nothing. When the next morning arrives, however, Kenji realizes that he had not only lost the girl of his dreams, but was now a worldwide terrorist for hacking into the system of the World of Oz. The World of Oz is a virtual world where you choose an avatar that represents you and is unique for each of the users. It includes a wide range of segments such as music, movies, games, shopping malls, and much more. You can shop for clothes, go on luxury experiences, pay taxes, and do a variety of other things, just like in the real world. It includes all the personal information of the user and has its authority in real life as well. The data is protected by emails and a trusted security system. Or is it? We'll find that out. Mark Zuckerberg is watching all of us. Be careful. Kenji is a young high school student who works as a part-time moderator in the massive computer simulated virtual reality world of Oz, along with his friend Takashi. One day, while they both are working together, Natsuki, their senior, invites any of them to join her for her grandmother's 90th birthday in Yuda City. They both agree, but Kenji gets to go after winning a paper-scissors rock game between the two. Well, isn't that the most mature way of deciding things? Natsuki and Kenji then leave for her grandmother's place. They travel through several trains and are joined by a few of her relatives on the way. Finally, they arrive at her grandmother's house, which is a huge traditional Japanese house. Apparently, Natsuki was a descendant of the Junoichi clan, an ancient honored clan with a long history in Japanese ancient war times. Natsuki then introduces Kenji as her boyfriend and fiancé to her grandmother. Kenji gets shocked. When did that happen? Was he dreaming? He had no idea about any of this, but there was no way he would pass on the opportunity of becoming such a beautiful woman's lover, so he however goes with it. Later, Natsuki convinces him to play that role for a few more days till her grandmother's birthday. Kenji is a typical nerd, good at mathematics of course, and also has no experience of interacting with any girls. So he blushes every time Natsuki is around, and when she touches his hand, his blood rushes from his hand to his head and other places if you know what I mean. All the relatives are gathered together for grandmother's birthday, which is all fun and chaotic. By the time of dinner, there is a huge table full of people in the house, including kids and young people, and old people alike. Natsuki introduces Kenji to the whole family, lying about his identity so that he gets accepted. All family members are happy for her, except her second cousin who liked her. What in the Alabama is all this? The house is so big that Kenji gets lost on the way to the bathroom. He encounters one of Natsuki's cousins playing games on his computer in a dark room who gives him directions. All this was just so that he could run into a half-clothed woman, to remind us that this is an anime just like all the others. He then sees the whole family disappointed near the garden due to the arrival of a guy called Wabiske. He seems to be hated by the whole family except Natsuki and her dog. Apparently, he is the son of her grandfather's mistress and had run away with all the money to America after selling Natsuki's grandmother's mountain, 10 years ago. After dinner, Wabiske and Natsuki play a traditional Japanese card game together. Kenji feels left out as Natsuki seems interested in Wabiske and ignores him completely. Wabiske wins the game and leaves while Kenji is still figuring out how to play it. Realizing that he was technically simping and Natsuki is more interested in this new Wabiske guy, Kenji is heartbroken and can't sleep. This brings us to the night when he got the strange message. As we already know by now, our guy solved the puzzle. The next morning he sees himself in the news, and what's worse, they claim him to be a hacker of the Oz world. All the activities in the system got messed up due to the defect in the system and Kenji was the main suspect as the hacking was done from his account. He panics and immediately tries to log into his Oz account, but it denies him access. He then tries to find the guy playing games yesterday to borrow his computer and log in. Kenji tries to log in, but his account has been blocked. Someone had stolen his identity in the Oz world. He even calls the support center, but access to the support center has been blocked as well. In the meantime, Kenji's friend Takashi calls Kenji and tells him that someone cracked the system with 2056 digit codes overnight. Kenji then panics because it was he who had solved that puzzle, thinking it was some kind of a brain teaser. Takashi then gets him a guest avatar and access to the game so that he can go and confront the guy who stole his avatar, and goes to fight with his own avatar. The guest avatar, however, lacks in skills and battling ability and Kenji is beaten up easily, so the gamer guy takes charge. Apparently, the gamer guy is the owner of King Kazama's avatar and his name is Kazuma, he then takes over the game and starts defeating the hacker. But in the middle of the fight, two kids interrupt them and Kazuma gets distracted, which causes the hacker to escape and gain the power of other avatars by devouring them. This turns the strange-looking avatar into a huge godlike avatar, 
with a muscular body and a halo around his back. If only I knew this, I would have cancelled my gym subscription months ago. Now the hacker is stronger than ever and even defeats Kazama. But before the hacker could devour Kazuma's avatar as well, Kenji quickly drags King Kazama and saves it from being stolen. After that, it is revealed that Kenji's old avatar is hijacked by an AI released by the US military, called Love Machine. In the living room when other members are watching TV and having their meals, they see the news about Kenji being the culprit. They all start questioning Natsuki about her choices and she reveals the truth. Kenji was not her boyfriend. What a snitch. The cousin who liked Natsuki named Shota turns out to be a cop, so he immediately arrests Kenji without any arrest warrant whatsoever, just because he wants to get rid of him. While leaving, Kenji gives an emotional speech to her grandmother where he thanks everyone for taking care of him, by which he's moved. Shota takes Kenji to his car and leaves for the police station while Natsuki follows them. On the way, they get stuck in traffic for a really long time. In the Oz world, the love machine gets access to the whole Oz infrastructure and messes up the whole system. The GPS system, traffic signals, train line, cable line, and many other systems in the real world get disturbed and cause so many troubles. All the relatives who were supposed to come for grandmother's birthday also get stuck in their work. The traffic jam that Kenji and Shota are stuck in is also due to Love Machine's virtual reality shenanigans. Natsuki and Mobasuke arrive at the scene on their bike and although Shota is reluctant, they take them both back to their grandmother's place. Meanwhile, after getting the news of a disturbance in the whole city, grandmother calls every relative stuck in their work and uplifts them to fulfill their duties wholeheartedly. There were many relatives in higher authorities, and also many of them had been out of contact for many years. Without giving a second thought, she searches for an old contact book and gets in touch with everyone, and gives them words of encouragement. That is how we know the family is so large that a member is in every position of power in the country. The AI is still in the Oz system and is disrupting the entire world's activities. Takashi informs him that the technicians at Oz still can't access the information center where the AI is hiding itself. He asks Kenji to try and solve the code and within minutes, he manages to enable the access for all the support mechanics to enter the information system. What's even more important is that yesterday, Kenji wasn't the one who had solved the code. He had actually messed up one of the final letters and so he was out of suspicion. The only reason his avatar was stolen was that he had sent the message back. There were 55 other people who had solved the puzzle. Only, Kenji was dumb enough to allow his data to be stolen. Kinda puts an asterisk in the whole smart thing, doesn't it? Order is soon restored and more of the family members manage to come home that night and they all have dinner together. Everything seems to be going well, and since all accusations on Kenji were cleared, he is accepted back into the family as well. However, during dinner, Wabasuke reveals that they can't beat the love machine and reveals that he was one of its developers. He tells his grandmother that he did it to gain the money back and pay her and come home proud, but this enrages her, being the patriot that she was, and she tries to kill him instead. Whoa, slow down there, granny. Wabisuke leaves the house as he was behind all this trouble Japan and the world had suffered. Kenji tries to check on grandmother after all this and she asks him to play cards with her. She likes Kenji and tells him to take good care of Natsuki even if she knows that they were not dating at this point. Early in the morning, everybody rushes to grandmother's room to see that she had passed away. Due to all the chaos happening in the Oz system, grandma's health monitoring system was interrupted and she couldn't be treated on time. All of the family members are frustrated and sad, and more importantly, angry. They plan to defeat the love machine once and for all so that the other people don't have to suffer. One of Natsuki's uncles had an electronics store, so they bring a supercomputer at home. Another uncle brings his fishing boat, which acts as the power source. One of the uncles from the military brings a military jeep with defense machines. They also bring blocks of ice and keep them at places to cool the supercomputer down. After everything gets ready, King Kazama then sends an invitation to the love machine to start another battle. The love machine, surprisingly, accepts the invitation and both of them have the rematch. While the love machine is having the upper hand, one uncle sends his avatar through a retro gaming console. This gives Kazama time to trick the love machine and escape to a trap room they had prepared for the love machine. After he is trapped, the room is filled with water to drown the AI. But suddenly, the trap started crumbling due to the overheating of the supercomputer. Apparently, Shota had moved the ice from the computer to the grandmother's room. Why, do you ask? Because he's an idiot. In the end, the love machine escapes and combines many avatars as one and knocks out King Kazama in just one hit. They lost the match. Kazama gets angry and punches Shoto for his idiocy. Yes, he deserved it. Suddenly, a clock appears on their screens and starts counting down. Two hours and ten minutes. This was the time they had to stop the love machine before it destroyed all the nuclear plants in the world and consequently caused the end of the world. Meanwhile, Natsuki tries to contact Wabisuke and informs them of the grandmother's death in agony. 
Hearing this, Wabiske immediately rushes back home. Upon hearing grandmother's last letter telling them to calm down, they then join together to have lunch with Wabiske despite the bitter feeling. They have only an hour left to fix things. During lunch, they discuss the strategy to bring the love machine down. Wabiske plans to break the love machine's programming internally while Kenji challenges it to battle with them once more. Natsuki represents the whole family in the game and bets all of their accounts in the game. As she keeps winning the game, she gains other accounts as well and the bets also increase. The game is a weird card game hosted by the AI in the Oz world. She would be battling an AI. However, the pressure of the game eventually gets to her and she starts losing, and the bet amount increases more than the number of accounts she has. She now had to discontinue the game, but suddenly people watching her started offering their accounts for the match. Apparently not only her family, but the entire world was rooting for her success. I mean, the whole world was at stake after all. She gains the power back and bets all the stolen accounts for one final match and finally wins. While they give a glance at the monitor, the countdown is still on, and the satellites start showing the target was their home. This isn't over yet. The love machine still had power over the satellites. The entire family begins to panic and attempts to flee the house, but Kenji holds it together and sits down for one final fight and takes over the system by solving the 2056-digit encryption yet again. He tries to unlock the system, but the love machine immediately kicks him out. The AI keeps changing the password to the entry and Kenji has to solve the code for access again and again. This happens several times and Kenji starts solving things in his head while the love machine tries to lock Kenji again. With only one minute left for the missiles to hit, Kenji does the unthinkable and solves a 2056 code in his head and gives access for King Kazama to enter the game. King Kazama immediately punches the AI and destroys it. The missile is redirected in its final moments to land a little further away from the house and from within the earth emerges a hot spring. They had saved the world, and more importantly, the entire family. In the end, the whole family celebrates the grandmother's birthday, as well as the funeral along with many other people who came to thank them for saving the system. Wabiske then surrenders himself to the authorities while Natsuki and Kenji get along together. And just like that, everything goes back to how it was. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.